It's another edition of your one-stop crime and security program, Crime Watch on Television Continental. In the next 25 minutes or thereabouts, we'll be bringing to your living rooms activities of different security agencies in the country. My name is Ivy Kano. Our train will be touching down in Delta, Ondo, and Lagos State, not forgetting our usual Vox Pop segment. We'll kickstart today's program from Delta, where a report says a young man said to be a notorious member of a gang of oil pipeline vandals and sea pirates have been nabbed by the Nigerian Navy. The man, who is of Ijo ethnic stock from Ondo State, was paraded last Thursday in Wari by the commander of NNS Delta, Commodore Joseph Zenva. Correspondent Carl Ofonio witnessed the parade and brought back this report. This is the young man said to be a leading member of a gang of crude oil thieves, pipeline vandals, and sea pirates. The commander of NNS Delta that paraded him said the young man is also believed to be a member of the dreaded militant group, Niger Delta Avengers, that has been destroying the nation's oil infrastructures. NNS Delta has just uh, arrested being part of the Operation Data Self has just arrested a notorious gang leader who has been in the business of these criminal activities since 2011. This particular chap is involved in uh, pipeline vandalism, attack on shipping, crude oil theft and other illegal activities and recently a suspected member of the Niger Data Avengers. Commodore Zumve vowed to hunt down other members of the gang still at large with a view to making them face justice. He appealed for information from law-abiding citizens which can lead to the arrest of fleeing members of the gang and other criminal elements in his area of operation. When interviewed, the suspect Abraham Suru, a.k.a. Capone, admitted committing the crime he was being held for. Welcome for Pulu. Uh, involved me for the, the militants. So, the Kanfapulu, he, he teased me how to shoot grenade. Shoot grenade? Grenade. Uh, dynamite, sir. Uh. So, he said the community youth, they're not recognized. That is, you know, annoyance. Papulu, he said as the the community get oil, oh yeah, up here community, for DB, you get oil, oh yeah, there is no recognized youth. He say make a bump some pipe so that may the community recognize and the company recognize it to give in work to benefit. Okay, how many pipelines have you bust so far? Have you destroyed? So two. But he denied being a member of the new militant group, Niger Delta Avengers, that has been bombing oil pipelines in the creeks of the Niger Delta in the past nine months. Are you a member of uh, Niger Delta Avengers? No, sir. Eh? No, sir. Suru's arrest is coming on the heels of the arrest of his partners in crime a few months ago somewhere in Sepple Delta State. <laughs> Now from Delta, we head straight to Ondo State, where we are told police authorities in the state have arrested a foster mother, Mary Matthew, for allegedly caging a five-year-old girl in kiosk for months. Mary, who alleged that the young girl was possessed, maltreated her by not feeding her for days. She is one of more than 30 suspected criminals paraded by the police in the state. My colleague, Ayodeji Moradeyo, witnessed it. Oh, 
Over 20 suspects were arrested at different locations in Ondo State for various offences ranging from armed robbery, murder to maltreatment of a minor. The case of the minor, Precious Michael, got the attention of many journalists who came to cover the parade of suspects by the police. The young girl was maltreated by a foster mother, Mary Matthew Ukeja, for months in a kiosk at Imafo village in Akure South local government area of the state. The foster mother claimed that Precious was possessed and I resolved to put her in a cage. The state commissioner of police, Ildai Bifuransin, narrated how the suspect was arrested by the police. Here in Akure, the good people in the neighborhood noticed that a child had been put in a cage for some days near the home of some persons that we later discovered were foster parents to the young girl of about four to five years. And she was being fed in the cage. She was made to defecate in the cage for a long period of time. And it was brought to the notice of the police command. We have a female officer in charge, the juvenile welfare center, and her DPO, the DPO of A division, that quickly swung into action. We got the little girl rescued from the cage. Also paraded by the police is a polytechnic student, Chukudi Owenwe, who allegedly murdered his girlfriend. Chukudi, according to the police commissioner, tricked his late girlfriend, Nifemi, to a year and subsequently strangled her at night. I murdered my girlfriend. There is also a young man who claims to be attending a tertiary institution in the state and her girlfriend also of that institution. She tricked the girl and they took her into the bush and killed her. He was arrested, the corpse of the girl, the disease recovered and he will be prosecuted for his offense. I murdered my girlfriend. Why? I have no reason for murdering her. You have no reason? Yes. She did not offend me at all. No. Evil spirits came over me. So the police also paraded armed robbery suspects who robbed innocent people at different locations in the state. Four exotic cars were recovered from the suspects. Also paraded was a middle-aged man who was in possession of army uniform. Oweifa Kimi, who is a member of a robbery gang, told journalists how he got the army uniform. When they come, I allow him, I asked him, he said they are going to through Bini. Okay, I said sleep to the break. Through, he sleep. And by the time you come, you bring black pull back. So, I not check the pull back. But I, I, I suspect that he is the one that have this uniform. Because I'm not criminal. I'm a student. Is the this uh, suspect that wear me the uniform? The suspects have since been charged to court by the command. I must say that's a very sad one for a five-year-old to go days without being fed. Um, and still in Ondo State, officers and main of the National Drug Law Enforcement. Agency NDLA have intercepted a vehicle carrying 3,278 kilograms of cannabis sativa, otherwise known as Indian hemp, along our road. The state commander of the agency, Mohammed Sokoto, disclosed this in Akure, the state capital, while parading the driver and the substance before journalists. Again, Ayodeji Moradeo brought back this report. So 3,278 kilograms of cannabis sativa packed in 298 bags was concealed in the Mercedes-Benz truck with registration number Lagos MUS 270SH. Perpetrators divided the all-age compartment of the vehicle into two 
and conceal the parts in their aim into the inner path away from the playing highs of law enforcement agencies. Parading the driver of the truck, one Usman Bello and the illicit substance before journalists in Akure, the state commander of National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, Mohamed Shokoto, said the seizure was made possible through intelligence report. He called on members of the public to always furnish the agency with information that could lead to arrest of Indian cultivators and drug barons. The NDLA boss promised that the agency would treat information it received with utmost confidentiality. An arrest has just been made by the officers of NDLA under state command on a motorized patrol operation along Owo of Bessie Road. An interception of a vehicle, Mercedes Benz, that has been specially designed, which is popular known as PACA, which is the number MUS 270XA, has been intercepted with 3,278 kilograms of cannabis, neatly concealed in 298 bags. Now, this has been made possible with an intelligence report that has been given to the NDLA, which has been affected. And it is on this light that I want to call on members of the public to always give us information that could lead and could be crystallized into intelligence that will lead to seizure and arrest like this. You can see that the vehicle has been specially designed. The volume and the quantity of seizure that has been made is not what is even more important but the mode of concealment. The vehicle has been specially designed in such a way that the compartment of the haulage has been divided into two parts, the outer and the inner parts. Now, the outer part is being used to pack legitimate items which could serve as a camouflage for any suspecting officer or law enforcement agent. And as such, it would be very, very highly less suspicious on the first glance. The driver of the truck, Bello, denied involvement in the illegal act, saying he was only contacted by a friend to assist him. He said he was not aware that Indian was concealed in the vehicle. The uh, driver to me 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 to so to me 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 me to 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 me Shokoto also disclosed that the command seized about 20,000 kilograms of Indian in the last two months. The commander added that 15 bags of Indian seized by the state police command has been handed over to the agency. We have destroyed a lot of cannabis farms. About 24,000 kilograms of cannabis sativa has been destroyed in the last two months. That is just between August and September this year. Well, there's, there's a lot of legal consequences. If you are arrested with consignments of drugs, you could risk life imprisonment. You could risk a lot of years in jail. Ondo State is one of the states known for high cultivation of indium in Nigeria. Now back here in Lagos, the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 2 Command, AIG Abdul Majid Ali, has reiterated his commitment to carrying out mental tests on police personnel within the zone, particularly those who bear arms. The AIG reaffirmed this while receiving the police medical team set up by the Inspector General of Police, IGP Ibrahim Idris. The reason for the visit, we were told, was to perfect arrangements on the mental test exercise. The medical team comprises experts and trained psychiatrists from the police medical department, led by AIG Medical Stella Akintade. Meanwhile, AIG Abdul Majid Ali has directed the commissioners of police in Lagos and Ogun State's heads of police formation within the zone to attend the workshop, which marks the beginning of the medical exercise on Thursday, 29th September 2016, at the Zonal Command Headquarters. Onikon Lagos and runs till the end of October in Lagos and Ogun states. Now I must say that's a very laudable idea given the fact that uh, the police have had cases of extrajudicial killings. From there let's see this interview we had with the AIG earlier in the week.
see it's very unfortunate, sir. Uh, some of these are estate developers. You see, when you are putting up an estate, particularly that area of Sherry, Sherry has not less than nine different type of estates there. Different estates, bigger estates within that uh, Sherry uh, access. Apart from the police station, the Sherry police station, which I don't have to, I know there should be a distance to, the, to where the estates were located. You see, they did not in, in build police presence in most of these estates. Not only in the Sherry, all over, all over the Federation. So when you are putting up an estate, think of, you know, you know, of police security. Not only police, but other security agencies as well. Put in police station, put in police uh, barracks, and you will have that. If you apply for then definitely it will approve. So you can have security within the estate. But what we have today, after building an estate, find the edifier estate, where they put, they put a container. So that shows we are just for container, not for a, a, a comfortable, affordable, you know, accommodation or office. So, which is rather unfortunate. We should take security very seriously. If you don't have security in your place, you cannot. You're not able to live there. So, if they want security, apply to the police. We have built a comfortable, fine police station for you. We have affordable or you know, uh, accommodation for the boys, then police will approve it. But it's never happened here. Only find a container put in front of it, paint it police color as a police post. We can never allow that and I will never allow that. I've said it, I will not give my men out to stay in a container. I will not. So, but we are, we are working together. I told my CP yesterday, CPO, to discuss this issue with them how to get a fine place, a good location, where they can site a police station, and they push it up. Well, I, I, I need to commend the, the two commissioners of police, as, uh, Lagos and Obi, CPs, and the men. Actually, they have been trying their best. One thing is that we cannot completely eradicate all this uh, crime and all this uh, and criminality in the society. Uh, we know that if you had, I'm sure you know what happened for recent when the operation was conducted, joint operation within that axis. So the, the problem we're having is still within the creek, within the water side. And uh, those are the kidnapped, those are the kidnapped cases happen within that access. So we we are trying to see how to set up more intelligence within that area, more information from people. We have fishermen that goes about there that can pass information to us where these guys are. And uh, from there we strike. So it's never an increase. If kidnapping had been at the very uh, lowest level this time around, and I'm sure we are going to keep it up. And I want to assure the people that we'll do our best in ensuring that we get these uh, four people released and also to try to put this an end to these uh, criminal activities. You know them. Not properly kept. You see, uniform rough, you know, bushy hair. Because some, but some, but some, there's some very expert and very smart. You know, you can't even at it. You can't even very difficult for you to know. Of recent, we got some of them arrested. A superintendent of police, even with an escort. You know, he came from where he came all the way from the east. Whereas, he's, he's, he's not a, he's not a policeman. He was arrested. Even the escort, the person that came to guide him, he went to a police station to get the escort to to come with him, and we got them. So we we. We know some of them. Some of them are either ex police, you know, or ex -I military, or ex this, ex that, which they have the knowledge of, you know, of the way the way we police uh, security agencies operate. And uh, we, have been, we have been picking many of them. Many of them. For instance, my team picks some of them. But they use police, they use their own private vehicle, their own uniform. Some either put in a barrette or, or, or belt in front of their car. So those are the things you, 
you to identify them to know that these people are not right. Some of the questions they will ask is uh, ridiculous. I do tell people that, look, if a policeman says, I want to take you to police station, go with him. If actually it's a police work, he will come with you to police station. But if you actually see the confidence in you that you want to go with him to police station, along the road he will stop. Say, OK, no, I don't want to go again. You just insist, we must go to that police station. So those are the things But people, the mother say, OK, uh, we are going to police station. Say, ah, I don't, I don't want to go to police station. Okay, let's set you. Uh, I set you. Then you collect what you collect and go away. You will do the same to other person. So, but insist. And uh, I do advise people they should get in contact with their DPOs. You see, a lot of people don't even have the phone number of their DPO. Some don't even know where police station is located. You see? So, if you ask them, I'm sure, if I ask you now, do you have a big with your DPO? The same thing. They don't know. Many people don't speak interest in that. Get in touch with the DPO. Have the phone number of the DPO or any senior officer, whether DPO or DCO. Once there's any problem, give her a call. Give her a call. Say, look, this is what is happening. If the person insists, remain there. But we'll find not, not find any time. So I'm in a hurry. I mean, no. We should is insist. It fear? Is it fear? Just insist this time around. Okay, is it fear? Do you I, think it's fear? I think I will fear. Yeah, Nigerians are scared of policemen because. No, no, no. You see, without the police of uh, before, not now. Nigerians know their rights now. So if you if you say anything contrary, they will, they will challenge you. So we should be able to put our legs on ground legs on run and say no, we won't allow this to happen. And when we do that, honestly, things will be better. But the the moment policemen accosted you, yeah, can I see your driver's license? Can I see this? Can I see that? After some time, I say, fire extinguisher, uh -huh. MRR, all this action of some stupid question that uh, not even uh, relevant, then insist. Okay, we're taking you to the station. Okay, let's go. You will not. The only thing is that they waste your time and approach them. You know, some, some, some of us will say again, out of annoyance, but Nigeria will just, the way, the way they talk to the men on the ground, these are men that have been on the road without any eating, and you know, so the, 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 the annoyance too. So they will just get annoyed when you tell them something. I say, what do you mean? And uh, they should have time, at least. Nothing bad. I just, most of the time, we, when we lecture these boys, nothing bad is saying, yes, ma, yes, sir. Cause the band that. Yes, can I help you, sir? Can I see your particular, sir? Where, can, where are you going, sir? Those are direct, those are things that are very simple that will add value to, to what we are doing. The IG has made it mandatory that lectures you know, on some of those topics are continuously being, being, being uh, you know, passed to these, uh, to these boys on, on the field. And we will, the DPOs as well as the CPs are doing the same. Yes, bell is free. Bell is free. But what do you, what do you, what do you see today? We have we started for a very long period. Police has made a point of uh, of, of campaign. Stickers being circulated. You know, uh, lectures being given. No need to give money for any 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 suspect. If you if someone commits an offence, if it's bailable, it's bailable. Release him to go. If it's not bailable, charge him to court. It's, it has been on. That those kind of questions have been on for a very long period. It's an old issue that by now we should have gotten over it. But however. People fall into problem. What they want, they want. They want to get released quickly, and that's why the money should come out. No, if you don't, if you know you are doing the right thing, why should I give money? So, but because they are not on the right path as well, so they want to give the money. They have money to so free themselves from it, and that is what brought in this corruption. Corruption that people are saying about police collecting money for bail, collecting money for this. So, so those are the issue. Now and again, the AIG has stressed that Bell is free. From there, let's go to the Street Fire Vox Pop segment. My husband was about uh, uh, dropping his colleague at the bus stop, and they arrested him, police. They arrested him for no crime. And this is rampant everywhere. People are mentioning it that ah, 
You dare not try it. Before my husband could collect his car, he paid a sum of 10,000 for what? For dropping his colleague. There are ev evidence. He showed his ID card. This person showed his, his ID card. All they need to say is that, okay, because he carried passenger. This is not his passenger. It's my colleague at the office. And this is rampant in Abuja. You can ask anybody. That if you drop anybody, be your husband or your wife, you'll be arrested. For what? And if you look at their response to crime, for example, maybe you volunteer to go and give information to the police. It is the same police that will go and tell the person that so so person came and gave us information. That is to show that we are not working together with the police. The police are on their own and we are on our own. And it will be difficult to tackle crime. Not only that, if there is any crime here, you call the police. Instead of them to come in quietly, what the police will do, they will blow siren. As they are blowing siren, the armed robbers will run. The system of selection, the system of recruitment, and the system of appointment, from the top to the down, to the bottom, in the police hierarchy, the police as an agency, is totally faulty. That is why you cannot see efficiency and accuracy in the Nigeria police. Like you said, I have so many experiences, and my colleagues out here will tell you, there are so many cases where a crime is about to take place, and you give this police signal, they will tell you, please don't call this line again. A crime is on, and you invite police, they will tell you we don't have fuel. I can say that, especially under this IG, I noticed there have been some level of improvement. Police now, wherever they are, they are very conscious of whatever they do because they know very well that the level of people's awareness now, people have come to know their right and police now, they are not doing their job in a more professional way. Before, if police come like this, they will just pick people, apply force and all that. But now, police, when they come to some, uh, some scene where probably crime or some illegal thing might have happened, they apply some level of professionalism in handling it. And that's a wrap on this week's edition. Remember, if you notice any criminal activity in your area, get the security agencies informed. And keep sending your comments coming in to Crime Watch at tvcnews.tv. Till next week, I'm Ivy Kano.